Nico Brahe. So if you get a chance, he writes about a badass every single week. It's wonderful stuff. Um, so I shaved off a few minutes off the end of my talk because I want to introduce a friend of mine who's traveling here with me on this trip. His name is Elon, and he's going to talk to you for about 10 minutes, and uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. So thanks again. Hey guys. Um, so, if you would have asked, it's very strange to be up here talking about this next project that we're going to go over here. Because if you had asked me about three years ago what I did for a living, I would have said uh, video games, alternate reality games. I was the chief design officer for the Xbox. Um, but if you asked me, I don't know, three months ago what I did, I would have said, well, I quit. I'm unemployed. Cause Fuck those guys. Um, <laughs> but if you had asked me three days ago, um, apparently now I'm a card game designer. <laughs> One game in question, of course, is called Bomb Squad. No? Stay with me. Um, so I designed this card game with a friend of mine, uh, Shane, and we're really proud of it. And it was really cool, and we took it to Matt, and we said, hey, check out our game, and he played it with us. And at the end of the game, he said, I love this. I really want to join your team, guys. I want to illustrate all your cards for you. But I have one condition. Um, we got to change that stupid name. Um, because the internet. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is our new card game. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's doing all right. Um, <laughs> Um, a quick note about Kickstarter. I'm obsessed with Kickstarter. I've wanted to put a project up there my whole life. Um, I back the weirdest stuff on Kickstarter. Did anyone back this one? An actual yeah. working hoverboard, right? Hasn't shipped yet. Um, uh, I back this crazy thing, which is literally this like pole you hold in your hand with an engine on it, and it blows the rain away from you because umbrellas are apparently broken. Um, <laughs> Uh, this one, you know, you're in a car, you put your hand out the window, and you, you do this thing on the waves, right? This is literally a surfboard. You attached your fingers, and you know, like, like, I love Kickstarter. Um, and this is my favorite one. Um, this was um, a desktop jellyfish aquarium, right? This is going to be so cool. I backed this. I was so excited. They ship you this thing. They ship you live jellyfish via FedEx. It was insane. Uh, you put the jellyfish in there. Jellyfish are, are really delicate creatures. Um, anything touches them and they, they just disintegrate. Um, so what was brilliant about this tank was the water went in a circle um, uh, around the tank so that the jellyfish were always suspended in the center. Or if they got towards the edge, they would just sort of ride this little slow roller coaster. Problem is... These are giant rocks! <laughs> I have no idea why they put those rocks there. Um, there was supposedly a filter. Here's what happens. The jellyfish go on their little ride around the circle. They hit the rocks and disintegrate. Oh. It was so bad that uh, in the San Francisco Chronicle, they published a story, local startup creates jellyfish slaughterhouse. <laughs> I love this All right, so. Um, we built this project, we agonized over it, we built a bunch of videos, we went over the rules, how are we going to put this up on Kickstarter. We finally launched it uh, 10 days ago, 12 days ago, something like that, yep. Um, and um, it went up and we hit our funding goal in 20 minutes, so that was pretty rad. Um, uh, this is how Matt views the Kickstarter. <laughs> Uh, for a little bit of perspective. This is how I view it. I put sticky notes over the number because it freaks the hell out of me uh, thinking about how many decks of cards we actually have to produce. Um, like I said, it's doing really well. Um, doing so well that this is what happens when you write uh, to my email account. There's a lot of words on the screen. These are the important ones. The user you're trying to contact is receiving a mail to rate that prevents additional messages from being delivered. This is from Gmail. <laughs> Um, every hour, they remove this block, and 30 seconds later, they apply it again. This has been happening for 10 days now. Um, we get crazy emails. Uh, this is from someone who wants to help Matt with the drawing, because his 13-year-old daughter is really good at drawing cats. Um, this is someone who started building leggings for us, which we thought was pretty amazing. Uh, someone made a plush toy for us. 
Um, a balloon animal for uh, one of our exploding kittens. That showed up this morning, actually. It was pretty rad. Um, this lady's uh, suing us, so that's really nice. Uh, there's a lot of these. You'd be amazed at how often you get sued when uh, something gets successful. Um, uh, Wikipedia page just went up, so now we officially exist. That's pretty rad. Um, two, three nights ago now, uh, Fox News showed up at my house unannounced, just knocked on the door, um, and wanted to see what this was all about. They had never heard of Kickstarter before, they had never heard of Project, and they thought it was a video game. Um, the woman, uh, this was my favorite, this woman, she had so little clue what she was reporting on, she could not keep the numbers straight. So what you're looking at here is, the camera is aimed at her, sitting at my desk, and that's my hand holding up a piece of paper that I scribbled on so I could remind her of all the numbers that she had to say on camera about this campaign that she was supposedly covering. It's been a really weird week. Um, and finally, um, this is the system administrator page for a Kickstarter campaign. And what's important about this is, you guys know, you ever have that feeling you're like up on a tall cliff or on top of a tall mountain and you look out at the void and it sort of pulls you. It's not because you're suicidal or anything, you don't want anything bad to happen, it's just you think like, what if, what if. Um, bottom left hand corner there, it says, cancel funding. <laughs> I say that every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, that's all we got. Um, we were going to do a Q&A session, but I think we're going to do that in office hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, office hours. I don't know how to set that up, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe, do we have time to we'll do what? We can show the video? I don't know. Okay, so, um, we'll, I'll, I'll fill in one question for you guys, uh, which is why the hell is this going so well? Um, the easy answer is because of this guy right here. Um, really. <laughs> The, the, the second answer, though, which uh, is really important, is we agonized over this. I mean, every word on that page, every frame of the video, how much should it cost, what should the reward tiers be? We learned a lot about Kickstarter, and if anyone wants to talk about uh, that stuff, we've got a lot to say. Um, but I thought what might be fun is to show you kind of uh, two videos. One is the first one we were going to put up on the Kickstarter page, uh, which looked like this. We need audio on the computer, please. Yeah, I think you have to plug the cable in that's leaning out back there. to a lot of friends and collected a lot of feedback and uh, changed it a bunch, of a bunch of times and uh, I'll show you the final video that's up there now just because uh, it's fun to see the difference. This is Elon Lee and Shane Small. They make really cool games. The three of us got together and created a new card game called Exploding Kids. Here's how the game works. You set our deck of cards face down and take turns drawing to when you draw the Exploding Kitten card. Whoever draws the Exploding Kitten card explodes, they are dead, and they are out of the game. Unless that player has the fuse card, which can infuse the kittens using things like laser pointers, kitten therapy, and cat and sandwiches. In addition, there are various action cards which can be used to move, mitigate, and avoid the kittens throughout the game, such as skipping your turn by wearing a portable cheetah butt, attacking other players by deploying a thousand more back here, thinking a card from the draw pile by rubbing the belly of a pig of corn, or seeking out the wisdom of an all-seeing goat wizard. You can also deploy the Taco Cat, Abra Crab Lincoln, Magical Meat Bikinis, and a fearsome Catawaki. To win this highly strategic, kitty powered version of Russian Roulette, you have to decide which cards to play, when to play them, and which of your opponents to target. The gameplay allows you to develop fun or cruel strategies against one another. The game is kid-friendly, super fun, and super easy to learn. But that doesn't mean Exploding Kittens is simple. With every card you draw, you increase your chances of getting one of the Exploding Kittens and being booted from the game. The longer you play, the greater your odds of exploding, and the more tense the game gets. 
So, if you're the type of person who's at the games, kittens, laser beams, Sasquatches, explosions, inchalogs, and sometimes goats, please, back our pixie. In exchange, we'll send you our game. Thank you very much. So that's basically it. We got a bunch of decks here. Uh, we'll have them out in the game room and wandering around, so stop us if you ever want to play. And uh, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for asking me tonight. Alan Lee, Matthew Inman, everybody. Uh, everybody stay in your seats. There's not going to be an intermission today. So if you have to pee, just do it where, you're, where you are. <laughs> uh, people on the wait list for the first Indian lunch have, in fact, been added to the second one. Thank you! You should get voicemails in your cabin to confirm that you want the spot. So that's... Take it. You don't, don't tell me now. <laughs> There's a system in place to deal with this. Um, uh, we, we have to... What's happening now? We're setting up the stage in some way? Okay. I'm just going to chat for a little while. With all of you. How's it going? <laughs> Do you guys like cruises? What kinds of activities do you like to do on cruises? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Uh, uh, here's a table, everybody. About how long is this setup going to take? Do we know? I just don't. I just don't want to know if I should do my long material or my short material. Right now, I'm doing zero material. Oh, good. Paul's going to do a couple of announcements, everybody. So we told. Really? Goddamn, Robert. Hard on his chair. Um, so we just told you about the people on the wait list for the, uh, the second Indian lunch. It should be confirmed. That they will make sure you get in touch with them to confirm that you are going to go to the second one. Uh, a couple of office hours announcements. There was a misprint in the original Sea Monkey. The Thursday Cloud 9 8 p.m. office hours that are listed for Keith Baker are actually going to be uh, Chris Pramus. Is he here? Take a bow, Chris. There he is. Am I pronouncing your word correctly or am I botching it? Yay, for once, yes. Yeah, screw you too. <laughs> and tomorrow afternoon, uh, the John Scaldi Opus Moreshi 4 till 5 o'clock event, uh, yet to be named, that is happening in the labyrinth, is now going to include 100% more Merlin Mann and John Roderick in it. And then immediately following that event, however long it runs, they will retire to office hours to a bar of their choosing. I am recommending the Schooner Bar because it is right outside the upstairs of the labyrinth and also because it is nautically themed. And I think they'll have fun with that. Those are my two announcements.